Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our shop. I know it's been a while since we've done any kind of videos or posted anything. Um, the YouTube overlords seem to have been putting some, some pretty nasty pressure down on us, and I was kind of holding out to see what really came about um, with my channel here. Um, it, it turns out that they're not... I saw a pretty nasty decline in the number of views, uh, the number of people liking the pages and sharing them, things like that, and I just assumed that at that point that they had pretty much shut me down, um, weren't going to let anybody see my stuff, um, but that trend has has kind of gone um, back to, I'm seeing a lot more consistent views, um, I'm definitely getting quite a few um, subscribers on a, on a daily basis now again, so I don't know what's going on, so I thought I'd give it some more chance here. Um, what we've got today is a Colt Detective Special. Um, this one here has been refinished at some point because the little pony on the side of the uh, plate is gone and some of the other markings have been kind of washed a little bit. Um, so you can see that the, the, the screw hole has been dished out. Probably somebody putting it on a buffer, polishing it out to re-blue it. So. Not an original gun. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a third series gun and we'll kind of um I, I, there's things that make me believe that there's supposed to be four series of these things there's um supposedly kind of generations or whatever you want to call them <clears throat> not a whole lot of difference in them but it is kind of a thing you're welcome to go online and look that up yourself i'm just not going to cover it there's not that many differences in them to to bother covering it um the way that these things came about with with colt was there was a gentleman by the name of John Henry Fitzgerald, um, and he worked for Colt somewhere between 1918 and 1944, and he started producing these guns called the Fitz Specials. And what they were were he was taking the the Colt police positives, and he was shortening the barrels and shortening the ejector rods. He was bobbing the hammer spurs down, rounding the butts off, and then removing ha you know uh, the front half of the trigger guard, um, basically right here where the trigger stops. He was taking all this off and. Um, <clears throat> basically dehorning the thing so that it could make it a real easy con concealed carry gun and this was the um, around the mid 20s uh, supposedly there's only nobody really knows there's somewhere between 40 and 200 of these those guns that were made by Fitz um, at Colt from the factory so they were a special order kind of thing he made some of them um, he went on later to keep building custom guns for, for some of his clientele. Um, but th that was the precursor to the modern, what we call snub nose revolvers, which is this, the Detective Special. Um, and, and the one that I tend to carry day to day. Um, I have a, a Smith & Wesson J-Frame, uh, a 340 PD 357 Magnum that I carry, um, which is even smaller than this one. But that, 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 those fit specials were kind of the beginning of all that. Um, the, this Colt Detective Special came about because the, the company itself, Colt, somebody up there said, hey, you know, these things are selling really well, uh, people really like it, we get a lot of good feedback, so they developed a whole other gun. Um, this is slightly bigger than the Smith J-Frames, but it's not as big as those police positives, so it's kind of in between there. It's a six round, a 38 Special, this one is anyways. Um, they came... Um, in a couple variations, you can get them blued or nickel finish for the older ones, and then later on, stainless steel replaced the nickel finish um, in the fourth series stuff. There were three calibers, well, four technically, that these things were ever made in. Um, 32 new police, 38 new police, and then 38 special. Um, that was only up until the end of the second series. From then on, um, I want to say in the 60s on, they were only a 38 special. Actually, I think it's below, I think of the 50s, they were only 38 specials, and that was all it came from. Um, there was some other minor variants of the gun. One was called a Colt Banker Special, and that was chambered in either 38 Colt New Police or 22 Long Rifle. Um, there were very few of those made, and even fewer of them were in 22 Long Rifle, so if you find one of those, they're probably worth quite a bit. Um, they were used by railway clerks mostly um, for for protecting the mail and stuff on the trains, things like that. Um, they also made one in the mid '80s called the Commando Special, which had a matte finish and rubber grips on them. Most of these things had hard wood grips on them. These are the Packmeyer, they're aftermarket. Um, they stopped making them in 1995. 
Um, there just there wasn't a market for him. Colt really started killing off the revolver line back then. And that, that was kind of the start of it. Um, so there's there there's some questions on these older revolvers like this, especially this Colt Detective Special, on whether or not you should be using plus P ammo in them. Um, and that's that's because back in the day, the the rated Sammy pressures for one of these guns was much higher. Um, they, they, at some point, I want to say in the 70s, that Sammy actually reduced the maximum pressure for 357 Magnum, 38 Special, like a whole bunch of cartridges. They actually reduced the maximum pressure for all of those cartridges, and that's why that happened. I don't really know. I couldn't tell you. I've tried to research it, and there's there's just a bunch of blank faces out there when I ask people. Um, my guess is the the ability to test modern pressures. Um, instead of using copper units of pressure, they use PSI with piezoelectric units. Um, they were finding out some stuff, so I don't know. That could that could be it. But anyways, I wouldn't shoot plus P ammo in these things. Regular Sammy Spec 38 Special, nothing hot loaded. Um, you 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 do risk damaging the gun. Um, that goes for anything that doesn't actually say it's rated for a plus P ammo. Just don't do it. Um, Colt says that. The use of plus PMO in steel frame revolvers, including earlier versions, um, they were citing two to three thousand rounds, then recommending they be sent back to the factory for inspection. But I think that was more about liability and lawyers than anything else. But either way, I'd stay away from it. Um, most people that carry these things, Colt Detective Special, but it was geared towards the plainclothes detectives and things like that, and uh, it was it was pretty popular for a long time. Um, they're good little guns, but we'll get down to it here in a minute. And uh, I'll show you taking this thing apart. So taking these things apart, they're they're pretty simple. Um, this one, the the bushing and screw are missing for these grips, but I got a hold of Packmar. They're on their way. But the grips would come off. Typically, is the first thing. Obviously, no bullets in the gun. And we are going to take this screw here out. And underneath the screw is a spring and detent, much like a lot of the newer revolvers do. Um, I don't know if Colt was the first one to do that, but it's there, definitely there. But see how that little guy will compress? And that's what holds the crane and yoke and assembly inside there. Um, this, this gun, this newer model, uh, is a newer version of it. The, the 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 yoke assembly here on the older models what you had to do is you had to unscrew this um, the knurling in here would come off and this whole thing would slip out this way on these newer models what it is is this rod itself actually unscrews the whole rod and it will come out the yoke comes out and then your ejector will come out the other end here now Inside of this, on the newer models, there is a bunch of goo all over this thing, so we're going to get a rag and wipe it down a little bit. Um, get a little bit wider screwdriver blade here. There we go. But yeah, there's a, a bushing, a collar, a threaded collar that goes in here that you've got to unscrew. Once you loosen it, really, you can just do it finger tight. But there's your ejector spring. And inside of there is another collar. That little guy that holds the spring. And that's what makes the ejector go in and out. This thing's pretty gross. Put it back together. I'll probably put a little bit of thread locker on that. <clears throat> That was pretty loose when I went to go take that apart. Now, what you got is the rest of the gun. Take it apart. No brainer. So there's some kind of little pain in the ass things about these guns. Um, when you pull this plate off, these two screws here will come out. Like 
so. This guy will come out. You've got to be careful. <clears throat> careful because your cylinder latch here is one that's going to come springing out there. It, it rides in a groove there with its little spring and, and kind of a detent that follow that in. There's that side plate it comes off. The rest of it's relatively simple. Um, it, it comes apart like a lot of the other guns here that we've dealt with before. You're going to have your pole come out and it just, this, this part here rides up and over and I'll go through some of that when we put it together. But your pole will come out there. And from there, we can go that main spring out of there, hammer strut spring, whatever you want to call it. We'll have to pinch it with a set of pliers and get it out and watch it go flying across the shop. And we got to push that little pin out right here, this little guy, and that pin comes right out lift that up and you can wiggle that guy out of there and then take your hammer out now this can be a pain in the butt this little bar here is is kind of like on the Smith & Wesson is what it does is it stops the hammer from going all the way forward if the trigger itself hasn't been pulled back but it's got this little arm that rides on rides in there well, you can see how all that moves around there so essentially it's all got to come out as one piece and then you can take it apart from there and it's got to go back in as one piece and kind of pop it open like so Oh, and there you go, and I'll show you how all this goes back together when I get it done. The only thing else that's in there now is your cylinder stop. And that little guy, this little screw here, it's under quite a bit of tension with that spring. So, I think I'm going to pull that spring out first, or not, will it come out first? Uh. I don't think it wants to come out first, so what the hell? I'm gonna go in there. Oh, there's a screwdriver. And I'm gonna try and hold on to that piece as I unscrew this. And I'll screw there. And those little pieces are sharp. These Colts are pretty stinking sharp inside of there, so I would I would caution you on that, just knowing. Um, but that's it. That's all there is to these guns. They are really really simple. Um, they're they're also very well made, very reliable. Um, I th there's very few issues. Um, well, you have your your cylinder um, guide or um, detent. This is when you push the, the thumb piece. This is actually what's pushing back. or locks into that center pin there and the ejector housing. That locks in there and that's what locks the cylinder up. So that's why you pull back on it and it pulls into that. That rides in there. And they're kind of a pain in the ass to, when you go to put the side plate back on, they're kind of a pain in the butt, which I will show you here shortly. Thanks for watching. Give me a like, thumbs up, share, subscribe, that'd be great.